These are 10 popular Angular questions for interviews that you need to know in order to get position as an Angular developer and feel yourself comfortable on interview. One of the most popular questions that I saw is how Angular is working and how all files are loaded. And here you need to answer that first of all Angular analyzes AngularJSON file, where we specify the whole configuration for our project. There normally we have a main.js file, which will be the first file what is loaded. After this inside main.js we normally start our Angular application and specify the Angular module, which is a main module where we register all our dependencies and other modules. Inside module we are defining also our routes and the component which will be used as bootstrapped, so main component for Angular. After this Angular starts to render our bootstrap component and all child components that are specified inside. The next popular question is what are advantages or disadvantages of using Angular? And here are several pros and cons that you can name. First of all, Angular is fully featured framework, which means we are getting quite a lot of stuff out of the box, like for example routing, modular system working with APIs, streams with the help of RxJS library, and much more. In comparison to React, you are getting all this stuff inside Angular, and you should not look for other third-party libraries, which may not be as good as libraries which are coming with your framework. One more important point is long-term support, so actually Google announced that they will support Angular quite a long time, which actually means it is quite safe to use Angular in production for your project, and you know that this framework won't be obsolete in the next several months. Also, we are getting TypeScript together with Angular out of the box. And this is extremely important because first of all you can build big applications and make sure that everything will work. And secondly, we have TypeScript out of the box, which means all developers which are developing third-party libraries will use TypeScript. And it's not like this in other frameworks. There people can use JavaScript or TypeScript, whatever they want to build libraries. And of course it's much safer to build libraries with TypeScript than with JavaScript. And here are some cons of using Angular. First of all, the level of entrance is much, much high because you need to learn quite a lot. You have stuff like TypeScript, RxJS, Streams, Angular Syntax and much, much more. You don't have that high level of entrance in other frameworks. Also, the code base of the framework itself is much more difficult than for example in React. So if you need to dig inside framework, it will be more difficult for you to debug it and understand how it works or where the problem is. The next popular question is what is our te or ahead of time compilation and what are benefits of it? And actually in Angular we have two different variants of working with JavaScript, ahead of time compilation and just in time compilation. Normally we are using just in time compilation inside development mode, which actually means we are compiling everything inside runtime, which means in browser. And actually in Angular first of all we have TypeScript and we need to transpile it to JavaScript because we can't execute TypeScript in browser. Secondly we have Angular templates which Angular also needs to transpile to JavaScript. Ahead of time compilation is entirely different, we are using it for production normally and the idea is that we are preparing everything so we are transpiling all our stuff before we deploy it to production. Which means in production we simply have a bunch of JavaScript files, we don't have any templates and we don't have any TypeScript files. And here are some benefits of using ahead of time compilation. First of all it's much faster because we are getting rid of TypeScript and our template, so actually Angular doesn't need to transpile it on the fly inside runtime. Secondly we have much less requests for external files because they are bundled inside our application. Also, we normally get more errors from our tab build than from just-in-time compilation. And this is happening because Angular compiles all our templates. And normally, inside just-in-time compilation, Angular doesn't check our templates that strict. The next popular question is what is dependency injection and why do we need it at all? 
And actually this is a nice question because a lot of people don't understand differences between ECMAScript 6 modules and Angular modules. And actually the main idea is that we have Angular modules which are working with dependency injections. What does it mean? It means that each module is completely isolated scope and we can create some files inside this module and they are completely isolated from our application. In the case of Angular we can create for example components or providers like services and they will be by default completely isolated inside our module. We can also allow to use some things from the module outside, which actually means that we must say that we have a dependency of some module. In this case we can use some stuff from this other module. And this is extremely important because it makes our application really safe. Everything is isolated and we must strictly provide what is allowed and what's not. One more popular question is what are lifecycle hooks inside Angular and what are most popular of them? So actually lifecycle hooks or lifecycle methods are just methods which are happening through different phases of creating Angular components. And actually there are several of them which are really popular and we can use for our benefit. First of all of course ng on init, this is the hook which will happen when we are creating new component. After this we have ng unchanged, it will be fired if we changed our inputs. There is also ng on destroy which will be triggered after destroying of our component. And normally we are using it if we want to unsubscribe from some subscriptions. And the last most popular hook is ng after view init. Actually sometimes we want to work with native elements. And for this purpose we need to wait until all children inside our DOM will be rendered. And this hook will be triggered exactly after full rendering of the component and all its children. The next popular question is what is the difference between promises and observables? And by default inside plain JavaScript we normally are working with promises. And promises is something which is triggered only once, with then or with catch if we have an error. But inside Angular we are using a Rix.js library and there we have streams and observables. And actually streams can be triggered a lot of times because it is stream, it's not triggered once like an observable. And this is the main difference. And inside Angular you don't need to work with promises at all, you need to work only with streams. And the main idea is that everything can be a stream. For example mouse move is a stream and working with API is also a stream. And even creating a data storage inside your service and modifying it can also be a stream. The next question is how we can share data between components. And there are three different variants. First of all we have inputs and outputs to pass data between parent and child component. This is the most basic and popular variant. Variant number two is working with services. Service is something which exists outside of our components and all our components can use this service, which actually means we can store some data inside our service and share this data across the whole application, doesn't matter how deep our components are nested. And the last variant is complex state management solution. For example the most popular is in GRX where you have a single global object just like a single service and you can subscribe for changes in this object from any component. The next question is what is the difference between component and directive? And the most important difference is that we are using components to create new widgets, which means we are creating some child elements with some markup, but we are using directives to add some new behavior to existing elements. The next important point is that inside component we can have markup, but inside directive we simply have a TypeScript file, which means some business logic, which is working with the element itself. Also we can create just a single element for the component, but we can attach to one element a lot of different directives. One more important question is what is a sync pipe inside Angular? And actually it's a default Angular pipe which allows us to get a value from the stream. And it is extremely important to use it, because in this case Angular reads a value by itself and unsubscribe from the stream also by itself. So we don't need to create subscriptions by ourselves and unsubscribe from them later. And the last question here is what is Angular Ivy? And this question shows directly how good you know the new tendencies inside Angular. And actually in the last versions of Angular we can enable Ivy, which is actually a new Angular engine. And it is available starting from Angular 8. 
So the main benefits of Ivy is we have fast recompiling, secondly the generated code is really easier to read, the template type checking was improved and the bundle size of output is really smaller. So these were 10 most popular Angular interview questions. And if you want to know about 5 most popular Angular mistakes, don't forget to check this video also.